Traffic is expected to double by the year 2020, and a solution to this problem is underway. This week in San Diego, the National Automated Highway System Consortium's Demo 97 is showing how automated highways can make roadways safer and less congested. Long-term AHS technologies will provide people with a chance to make better use of the time that they have to spend driving their cars. In the shorter term, we primarily provide more safety with AHS technologies. Specially equipped cars, trucks and buses are navigating a 7.6 mile stretch of Interstate 15 on their own, allowing the driver to sit back and enjoy the scenery. Automated highway technologies offer a lot of near-term applications. For example, uh, adaptive cruise control will automatically adjust the speed of your car to the cars around you so that you don't have to turn your cruise control on and off. Lane departure warning systems will automatically alert you if you start to drowse off and your vehicle starts veering off the roadway. Or uh, blind spot detection. If a car is in your blind spot or a pedestrian for that matter, you will be alerted by the automated highway technologies that uh, a danger condition exists. Uh, clearly we're going to see greater efficiency and uh, a greater sense of safety uh, come forth as a result of uh, this kind of investment in our transportation system. Fully automated highways may be here sooner than you expect, and within a couple of years, you will probably see several of the smart technologies being demonstrated here today in the cars you buy and on the highways you drive. This is Jill Seip reporting in San Diego. The first smart highway opens for business. This is the CBS Evening News. Millions of vacationers take to the road and run right into congestion, confusion, and sometimes a collision, but help may be on the way. As CBS News correspondent Sandra Hughes reports tonight, the quest for a safer, smarter highway is moving right on track. Taking a hands-on approach to solving the nationwide problem of gridlock, engineers have created a new way to commute, which will let you take your hands off the wheel. Activate steering control. It's called steering a smart control. highway. Oh. Guided by little magnets in the road, cars can drive themselves at speeds up to 100 miles an hour with just a few feet in between. Its creators say the computer-controlled cars are not only faster, but safer. It can help overcome the limitations of the drivers who are the cause of at least 90% of the crashes that occur today. We are about to take off on the highway of tomorrow. Scientists have been dreaming about this kind of transportation since the 1930s, but it took 60 years and a federal mandate to reduce congestion to make it reality. Transportation experts predict smart technology like this will eventually reduce the Southern California commute by 15%. So what will you do with all that extra time on your hands? In the morning, you can read a newspaper, you can read a book, you can prepare your first memo to the work, and for the girls, you can put your makeup but the smart highway isn't cheap. It will cost $10,000 a mile just to put the magnets in existing roadways. Right now, scientists say it's too expensive to retrofit a consumer's car with the technology, but it will be affordable in a few years. Will car-crazy Californians ever give up the driver's seat? I think most people psychologically will have a hard time uh, actually turning their back uh, to their steering wheel and letting a machine drive their car. Currently, the only smart highway technology is on a seven-mile stretch of freeway in San Diego. But in less than 10 years, it will be all across California. And researchers predict that if they can solve the traffic problem here, they can do it anywhere. Sandra Hughes, CBS News, San Diego. Well, how would you like to read the paper on e or even take a snooze while driving to work? You could, uh, using some new technologies unveiled this week out in California. New 7's Greta Cruz hit the superhighway in San Diego to show us how. You're now under automatic control. Hands off steering. This old General Motors clip was once considered far-fetched. No more. We're OK on seatbelts. Research engineer Bala Kumar is about to relinquish control of his steering wheel, gas pedal, and brake. The scene, HOV lanes on I-15 in San Diego, California, chosen to showcase the emerging automated highway system technologies. Chuck Thorpe of Carnegie Mellon explains, as with a push of a button, Bala lets his minivan take over. Bala is sitting in the driver's seat, but the vehicle is automatically doing the steering and is automatically controlling the gas pedal automatically deciding what the appropriate speed is to drive here and driving at that speed. 
Congress has mandated that a prototype automated highway system be in place by 2002, a system designed to double capacity on existing highways while actually making them safer. 90% of the crashes are caused by human error. If we can help the driver eliminate uh, that error, then we can avoid many of those crashes. Technologies include fitting cars with tiny cameras on the windshield, computers in the trunk, radar devices that sense other vehicles, and magnets embedded in the highway and read by cars. Vehicles talk to each other or to the highway without the driver. Hands-free driving is really a lot like taking the bus or the train. You can literally sit back, read the paper, have something to eat, get some work done, or even take a nap. Fully automated highways are still 20 years or so off, but the congested Washington area may well be one of the first to see them. This system is perfectly suited to the uh, highway arterials, I-95, as well as the beltway uh, travel. And if you find this whole idea rather scary, officials say giving up control of your car will always be optional, a push button away. In San Diego, Greta Cruz, News 7. Beep, 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 yeah! Credit tells us the uh, so-called smart car would cost you just an extra 1000 to $1,500 off your regular car price. Guess it won't be dangerous putting your makeup in the rearview mirror anymore, will it? <laughs> now, for those preparing to hit the highway this August weekend, a look at a new driving experience. Jeffrey Kay of KCET Los Angeles reports. Look, ma, no hands seem to be the major theme of a transportation technology demonstration in San Diego this week. The showcase was put on by a two-and-a-half-year-old consortium of private companies, government agencies, and universities. The exhibition was a condition of federal funding. Although some of the technology is new, automating automobiles is not a new idea. Safe distance between cars is maintained by automatic radio control. The concept was presented by General Motors at the 1939 World's Fair. Now GM is part of a private-public consortium, 80% funded by the U.S. government. GM engineer Jim Rillings is the consortium's program manager. Our goal is to develop a prototype automated highway system, but more than that, it's really to advance highway automation technologies to improve safety and uh, reduce congestion on highways. Consortium members are using a range of technologies on a variety of vehicles. This car has... Uh, our communication radio right. that talks between cars 50 times every second. These sensors actually monitor the blind spot of the bus for the computer. So Radar, lasers, and cameras send highway information to onboard computers. The computers control motors which operate braking, acceleration, and steering. This week's demonstrations took place on a seven and a half mile stretch of express lanes on a San Diego freeway. The road had been equipped with buried magnets, which act as guides. Speed control on. One demonstration was of a convoy of cars traveling as an automated pack, fast yet close together. The point was to show how to move more cars more smoothly and safely along highways. Rajesh Rajamani is with the University of California at Berkeley. The car is being centered on the lane, using the magnets, the computer controls the steering wheel to keep the car centered. Also, the computer uses the radar and the radio system on the car to maintain a spacing of 20 feet and a speed of about 60 miles per hour from the car in front. Other demonstrations showed automatic lane changes to avoid obstacles. And a garbage truck was programmed to automatically pick up highway debris. But as dazzling as this technological wizardry may be for some, there are those who question its value and expense. And critics want to put the brakes on development of the so-called automated highway system. The Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles is a virtual monument to the car culture. That's where we met with Catherine Burke, an expert in transportation and innovation at the University of Southern California. 
Burke says an automated highway system is not the answer to America's transportation problems. They're trying to come up with a quick solution based on highways. And what we need is somebody to think about the overall picture. What do we need to move people and goods in urban areas? But transportation planners say automation is just one piece of a puzzle. Dick Bishop of the U.S. Department of Transportation oversees the consortium for the federal government. In some areas, automation is not the answer. In other areas, it might be just the thing to increase the capacity of the highway, respond to the needs of the public, and at the same time maintain the land use goals and the, um, the mobility goals. If automation is to make mobility safe and efficient, it's got to work. And Catherine Burke says there are many unanswered questions about the technology itself. What happens if a tanker, you know, jackknifes and it hits this automated lane where you can't even get out of the way? As far as I know, nobody's worked out how to do an interchange. Uh, not everybody wants to go in a straight line. Some people want to turn. Getting from one highway to, to the next. Right. Uh, the other issue that is a technical issue is what happens when you exit. Burke says there could be bottlenecks when automated cars leave their designated lanes. Approaching destination. That is a wake-up call for the driver. Experts do have some answers, for example, to the question about a jackknife truck. There's two responses possible. One is if there is no obstacle in the next lane, the convoy would make a lane change. Um, alternatively, the platoon would stop before we hit the obstacle. Who would be but faster in that circumstance, a human or a computer? The computer would be much faster than a human. But as to the problem of potential bottlenecks when automated cars leave the highways, Rajamani said research remains to be done. There are many such unanswered questions, but engineers point out the new technology has useful applications short of full automation. The San Diego demonstration showed trucks and buses equipped with warning devices. So you can feel when the front tires hit that shoulder, the alert goes off to tell the driver you need to pay attention now. Todd Yoakum is a scientist with the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. He says that while it may be decades before technology replaces drivers, consumers are gradually being prepared for automation. We think that it probably the average person, average consumer, is going to be a little apprehensive about going from his car now to a car where he hits a button and it drives by itself. So what we need to do is two things. We need to make sure that the drivers are comfortable with the technology. At the same time, we need to make sure the technology is capable. And the way to do that is to first deploy the systems in a warning capacity. It's important to phrase this kind of stuff in terms of like a cruise control. Everybody has cruise controls. Everybody's comfortable hitting those buttons. They just need to get comfortable hitting the buttons to adjust the sensitivity of their warning or adjust their headway gap, things like that. Well, if you do that in small steps, I think people will recognize there is a benefit. Proponents of automated highway transportation systems see a promising future. They hope public demonstrations like this will spur support for continued federal funding. Congress will consider authorizing more money later this year. KUSI San Diego. And you've been waiting for a long time for it. Now Interstate 15 is ready for a test drive by your car. We'll tell you about the automated highway when the KSI Morning News returns. San Diego drivers will get their own chance to try out that automated highway experiment you've been, that's been going on along Interstate 15. KUSI's Kevin Kelly has a preview of what's being called Demo 97. Back in the old days, engineers at General Motors had a vision. Well done, Firebird 2. You're now under automatic control. Hands off steering. While our cars may not be jet propelled or look like this, their vision of a fully automated car wasn't far off target. Welcome to the 90s, where driving a fully automated car gives the term look ma, no hands, a whole new meaning. We're talking about a kind of an autopilot switch here, huh? Actually, yes. And uh, we think that it's a, a great way to uh, travel in the future. This week, all eyes will be on San Diego as the National Automated Highway System Consortium hosts Demo 97. We're ready to go. We're ready to show what AHS can mean to the future of transportation. Fully automated highway systems may still be several years away but you won't have to wait until then to experience the thrill of getting in a car that for the most part drives itself 
Starting Wednesday, San Diego's commuter lane on Interstate 15 will be showcased as the first ever automated highway. This is where you will see and experience for the first time ever hands-free and feet-free driving. We're going to be able to give some of the folks, uh, the general public, a little experience and they can be the first on their block to really see what automated technologies are all about. Cars equipped with motion sensors and computers communicate with each other about when to speed up, when to slow down, and when to make a lane change. All you have to do is sit back and enjoy the scenery. And you'll see a lot of this technology is going to be available on your vehicles in the near future, one piece or one part at a time. And then in about 10, 15 years, all of it will fuse together into an automated highway system. But you can get a sneak preview this weekend at Miramar College. Kevin Kelly, KUSI Morning News.